Lauren is my name. I used to believe that I had it all figured out. A young boy, a spouse, and a solid position as deputy head of finance at a large corporation. Although we weren't wealthy, I believed that we were content. Tom, my spouse, was a salesman for electronics. Therefore, his income was inconsistent. He would receive a hefty wage in certain months and barely make ends meet in others. However, we managed to make it work. We had been accumulating money to purchase a house for seven years. I was adamant, even if it wasn't easy. We deposited every extra dime into our savings account. Instead of dining out, I would cook at home, clip coupons, and purchase generic brands. Sometimes Tom would complain, but I believed he understood. That Sunday afternoon, it all came crashing down. Once more, we browsed through real estate listings on the internet. Tom's eyes brightened as he gestured toward the television. Lauren, have a look at this one. It's flawless. I took a closer look. I have to confess, it was very lovely, roomy, contemporary, and with a large backyard. But my heart fell when I saw the price tag. We can't afford it, Tom. It's much beyond our means. We'd had this conversation before, so I was expecting him to sigh and go on. But something inside of him gave way this time. He said, slamming his laptop shut, Of course we can't afford it. We never have enough money. You just keep saving, saving, saving. Now he stood up and paced the space. For Jimmy's schooling in the home, but where's the payback, huh? When will we be able to truly appreciate life? Tom, calm down. No, I refuse to give up. Lauren, I'm tired of this. Sick of living on a tight budget, tired of never traveling someplace pleasant, and tired of dressing in the same old clothing every year. I'm worthy of better than this. I ought to have a better spouse in life. His remarks felt like a blow to the face. Tears were prickling in my eyes and my cheeks were burning, but I forced myself to swallow and didn't let them fall. Tom, please, I responded, attempting to seem nonchalant. Just inhale deeply. We must exercise patience since we are nearly there with our savings. Just relax and let's have a conversation about this. I was mistaken to believe that by soothing him with my words, we might have a reasoned conversation. With a furious expression on his face, Tom walked out of the room, slamming the door so forcefully that the windows trembled. After Tom's tantrum, I was under the impression that things would improve, but I couldn't have been more mistaken. Tom returned home the following day, filled to the brim with expensive clothing and a brand new wristwatch. I looked at him, perplexed. What's all this? I inquired. With a daring sparkle in his eye, he shrugged, just taking care of myself. Do you have an issue with that? I bit my tongue so as not to incite another quarrel. However, things only grew worse in the next weeks. Tom began squandering his whole salary on costly electronics, upscale dining, and hangouts with his friends. I couldn't contain myself any longer as he was leaving the house that evening wearing a brand new suit. Tom, how are our savings doing? The residence? His face steely, he turned to face me. Lauren, life is too short. I have finished putting money aside for an uncertain future. Right now, I want to live. But what about Jimmy's education? I applied pressure. Tom sneered. I accomplished well despite my parents not being able to afford my schooling. He's eligible for loans and scholarships. Besides, there's no need to squander money buying a house. We can continue renting. I was conversing with someone I didn't know well. The man I married was not this one. Tom became increasingly extreme in his actions as the weeks stretched into months. He began going out late almost every night. He would occasionally have unexpected business trips on the weekends, which had never happened in his years of employment with the company. 
Additionally, living with him at home was like living with a continuous critic. At meals he would snap, do you have to chew so loudly? He would remark, that dress makes you look frumpy, while I was getting ready for work. He used to throw his dirty socks on the floor and grumble, can't you keep the house cleaner? Every day. I could feel myself getting smaller and smaller beneath his relentless criticism. I made an effort to communicate with him and find out what had changed, but all he did was roll his eyes and turn to go. Half a year. Six unpleasant, protracted months of this new normal. My life was so unlike the one I knew before. The cozy, loving house I believed we had created together had become unfriendly and icy. One evening, I finally had enough. Tom had just done giving me a hard time over the supper I had prepared, which was once his favorite. Tom, I said, my voice quiet but firm, I think we need to live separately for a while. I expected an argument, maybe even remorse. What I didn't expect was the look of relief that washed over his face. Yeah, he said, nodding. I think that's a good idea. His easy agreement felt like a punch to the gut, but it also confirmed what I had been fearing for months. The man I loved, the life we'd built together, was already gone. The days after Tom left were a strange mix of loneliness and peace. I told myself this separation was temporary, that Tom would realize what he was missing, face the harsh realities of life on his own, and come back appreciating everything we built together. I was so naive. It was a Tuesday evening when my phone started buzzing nonstop. At first, I ignored it, focusing on helping Jimmy with his homework. But when the notifications kept coming, I decided to check. The moment I opened my social media app, my heart stopped. There at the top of my feed was a photo that shattered my world. Tom, my husband, was standing on a yacht, his arm wrapped around a stunning blonde with legs that seemed to go on forever. They were both grinning, the blue sea stretching out behind them. But it was the caption that really got me, starting a new life. I retreated to the kitchen, my hands shaking as I scrolled through the comments. Friends, family, co-workers. Everyone was asking the same thing. Who's that woman with Tom? Then five days after the photo appeared, there was a knock at the door. I opened it to find Tom standing there, looking tan and happy, happier than I'd seen him in years. We need to talk, he said, brushing past me into the house. I followed him into the living room, my heart pounding. Tom, what's going on? Who was that woman in the photo? He turned to face me, a smirk on his face that made my stomach turn. That's Vanessa, my girlfriend. The room seemed to spin. Girlfriend? But we're married. We're just separated. Come on, Lauren. He cut me off. Let's not pretend our marriage has been over for a long time. Vanessa and I, we've been together for six months now. Six months. The timeline clicked into place. His sudden change in behavior, the late nights, the business trips. I felt sick. She's rich, Tom continued, oblivious to my distress. And fun. She doesn't pinch pennies or obsess over saving. She lives for today. Plus, he added with a cruel smile, she's a hell of a lot more interesting and beautiful than you. I want to marry Vanessa, start fresh. I nodded slowly. In that moment, I realized our marriage had been over long before this conversation. Maybe it had been over the moment he'd slammed the door six months ago. Okay, I said, my voice steadier than I felt. If that's what you want, we'll get a divorce. Tom looked surprised, like he'd expected a fight, but I was done fighting. As he left, already on the phone with his lawyer, I sank onto the couch. The divorce proceedings were a blur of paperwork and legal jargon. Tom and I agreed on joint custody of Jimmy. I wanted him to have both parents in his life, despite the mess we made of our marriage. 
but even with the divorce finalized, I was far from okay. The betrayal, the public humiliation, the sudden upheaval of my entire life. It all hit me like a ton of bricks. I found myself struggling to get out of bed in the morning, barely able to focus at work. That's when I decided to see a therapist. Dr. Reynolds was a kind older woman with gentle eyes. Lauren, she said in our first session, what you're feeling is normal. You've experienced a significant trauma. But you're here, and that's the first step towards healing. Those sessions became my lifeline. Slowly, with Dr. Reynolds's help, I started to process my emotions, to understand that Tom's actions were about him, not me. For Jimmy's sake, I pushed myself to heal, to move forward. I threw myself into my work, started exercising, even joined a support group for divorced women. Bit by bit, I felt myself emerging from the fog of depression. Then Tom married Vanessa. I tried to be happy for Jimmy. He seemed to like her well enough. But things started to change. It began innocently enough. Tom asked to have Jimmy for a weekend, an extra day here and there. I agreed, wanting to encourage their relationship. But soon, those weekends turned into weeks. Jimmy, I asked one day, don't you want to spend more time here at home? He shrugged, not meeting my eyes. Dad's place is more fun. That should have been my first warning sign, but I brushed it off, telling myself it was natural for a boy to want to spend time with his father. As the months went by, though, Jimmy spent less and less time with me. When he did come home, he was different, distant, and he always seemed to have new clothes, new toys, stories of exciting trips and adventures. Finally, after yet another weekend where Jimmy begged to stay at his dad's, I sat him down for a talk. Honey, what's going on? Don't you like being here anymore? Jimmy fidgeted, still not meeting my eyes. It's just dad and mom, let me do whatever I want. I echoed, confused. Yeah, Vanessa, she buys me cool stuff all the time. We go to amusement parks and fancy restaurants. It's way more fun than here. His words felt like a slap in the face. Jimmy, you know we can't afford that. That's the problem. He burst out. You never want to spend money on anything fun. It's always save this, budget that. Dad says you're stuck in the past, always worrying about the future instead of living now. Things spiraled quickly after that. Jimmy started refusing to come home at all. When he did, he'd complain constantly, comparing my modest home unfavorably to Tom and Vanessa's lavish lifestyle. The final blow came on a rainy Tuesday. I'd been trying for days to get Jimmy to come home for dinner. When he finally arrived, he took one look around our living room and smeared, God, this place is like a village barn compared to Dad's house. I don't want to live here anymore. The months slipped by, each one harder than the last. I watched from the sidelines as my son grew up, becoming more and more distant. Every time I reached out, I was met with indifference or outright hostility. Then came the day that shattered what was left of my world. It was Jimmy's 14th birthday. I'd hoped, foolishly perhaps, that he might want to spend it with me. Instead, I got a phone call that changed everything. Mom, Jimmy's voice was cold, detached. I need to talk to you about something important. We met at a cafe, neutral ground. Jimmy sat across from me, looking more like a stranger than my son. Then he dropped the bomb. I want you to give up your parental rights, he said, his voice steady. Vanessa wants to adopt me. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. What, Jimmy, I'm your mother. No, he cut me off. Vanessa's my mom. She's been there for me. She understands me. She and Dad can give me the life I want. He hesitated, then plowed on. She can't have kids of her own. I want to be her son legally. I sat there, stunned, as Jimmy laid out their plan. Tom and Vanessa had already spoken to a lawyer. 
All they needed was my signature. Over the next few weeks, Tom and Vanessa pressed hard. Tom was triumphant, gloating. I wanted to fight. Every maternal instinct in me screamed to hold on to my son. But looking at Jimmy's face, seeing the determination there, I knew it would only push him further away. With a heavy heart, I signed the papers. The finality of it crushed me. I spiraled into a deep depression. If it hadn't been for my mother, I'm not sure I would have survived. She moved in with me, forcing me to eat, to get out of bed, to keep living. Slowly, painfully, I started to rebuild my life. I threw myself into work, started volunteering at a local animal shelter. Anything to fill the void left by Jimmy's absence. Three years after the divorce, I met David. He was kind, successful, and patient. He listened as I poured out my story, offering support without judgment. When David proposed, I surprised myself by saying yes. As we exchanged vows, I felt a mix of joy and sadness. This wasn't the life I'd planned, but maybe it was the life I was meant to have. Just when I thought I had my new life figured out, I discovered I was pregnant. The news hit me like a tidal wave of emotions, joy, fear, excitement, and a twinge of sadness as I remembered the son I'd lost. David was over the moon. He'd always wanted children, but had never had the chance. We threw ourselves into preparing for the baby, transforming one of the rooms in our new house into a nursery. Oh, the house. It was everything I'd ever dreamed of and more, spacious with a beautiful garden and a view that took my breath away. Every morning as I stood in the kitchen, my hand resting on my growing belly, I couldn't help but think how different this was from the life I'd had before. I tried not to think about Jimmy. He never called, never answered my messages. But I couldn't help myself from checking his social media accounts. At first, I told myself it was just to make sure he was okay. But as I scrolled through photos of lavish parties, expensive cars, and exotic vacations, I felt a growing unease. The carefree boy I'd raised was gone, replaced by a young man who seemed to value wealth and status above all else. I watched with a heavy heart as he posted about peasants who couldn't afford designer clothes or complained about having to interact with common people at events. The final straw came when he shared a rant about how people below his level shouldn't be allowed in certain clubs. That day, with tears in my eyes, I unfollowed his accounts. It hurt too much to see what he'd become. Months passed, and our daughter, Emily, came into the world. As I looked into her tiny face, I silently promised her that I would never let her go, never let anyone take her from me. As Emily grew, we started taking family trips, nothing extravagant, just weekend getaways to the beach or visits to nearby cities. I loved watching Emily's eyes light up at new experiences, hearing her delighted giggles as David swung her around in the waves. Life settled into a happy routine. I'd almost forgotten what it felt like to be constantly on edge, always worried about money or the next argument with David. With Emily, I felt safe, loved, and content. Then came the day that turned everything upside down again. It was a sunny Saturday afternoon. David had taken Emily to the entertainment center for some daddy-daughter time, and I was enjoying a rare moment of quiet, catching up on some reading in our living room. The doorbell rang, startling me. We weren't expecting any visitors. Curiously, I went to answer it. The moment I opened the door, my heart stopped. Standing on my doorstep, looking older and somehow both familiar and strange, was Jimmy. He was taller now, his boyish features sharpened into those of a young man. He was dressed expensively, a gold watch glinting on his wrist, but it was his eyes that caught me. They were hard, calculating, so different from the warm brown eyes I remembered. Hey, Mom, he said, his voice deeper than I remembered. Long time no see. I stood frozen, unable to speak. 
Jimmy's eyes roamed past me, taking in the foyer with its high ceilings and elegant decor. He let out a low whistle. Wow, nice place you've got here. Looks like you're not doing too bad for yourself. His tone was casual, almost mocking. I felt a chill run down my spine. Jimmy, I finally managed to stammer. What are you doing here? How did you find me? He shrugged, a smirk playing on his lips. Grandma told me, don't worry, I had to work hard to get it out of her. She's quite protective of you. I made a mental note to thank my mother later and to have a serious talk with her about boundaries. Can I come in? Jimmy asked, not waiting for an answer as he brushed past me into the house. I stood in the living room, watching as Jimmy sauntered in and sprawled across our pristine white couch like he owned the place. What happened, Jimmy? Why are you here? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. He let out a bitter laugh. Oh, it's a real soap opera, Mom. Turns out my dear old stepmom wasn't as devoted as we all thought. Vanessa divorced Dad and kicked us both out of the house. Can you believe it? That impudent gold digger found herself a younger model and decided she didn't need us anymore. I winced at his crude language, but he was on a roll now. Guess I bet on the wrong horse, huh? He looked at me pointedly. Should have stuck with good old reliable mom instead of chasing the high life with fat. His words stung, bringing back all the pain of his rejection. But before I could respond, he switched gears. But hey, water under the bridge, right? You're still my mom. We've got a lot of lost time to make up for. His tone was jovial, but there was something unsettling in his eyes that made me uneasy. I took a deep breath. Jimmy, I'm not sure it's that simple. You chose to cut me out of your life. Legally, I'm not your mother anymore. He waved his hand dismissively. Technicalities. Blood is thicker than water and all that crap. Besides, he grinned, think of all the money you saved not having to raise me these past few years. It's only fair you share some of that now, right? Right. And there it was, the real reason for his sudden reappearance in my life. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but I can't just give you money, I said firmly. I have responsibilities here. I have a daughter to raise. Oh, so have you replaced me, huh? He interrupted his laugh, ugly and bitter. Got yourself a shiny new kid and forgot all about your firstborn. I felt my temper rising, but fought to stay calm. It's not like that, Jimmy. Look, if you need help, maybe I could talk to David about getting you a job. A job, he scoffed, cutting me off again. I don't need a job. I need cash. Come on, Mom, you owe me. I don't owe you anything, I said, my voice finally hardening. You made your choice years ago. I'm sorry you're in a tough situation, but I can't just hand over money to you. His face darkened, all pretense of friendliness vanishing. You selfish fat witch, he snarled, jumping to his feet. Dad was right to leave you. You're nothing but a nasty old hag who cares more about her bank account than her own son. Before I could respond, he stormed out, slamming the door so hard a picture fell off the wall. I sank onto the sofa, my legs no longer able to support me. Tears welled up in my eyes, spilling over as great heaving sobs racked my body. This angry, entitled young man. How could this be my Jimmy? Where had I gone wrong? Was this my fault for not fighting harder to keep him? Or was this the inevitable result of the lifestyle Tom and Vanessa had given him? I don't know how long I sat there crying. All I know is that when I heard David's key in the lock, I hurriedly wiped my eyes, not wanting to worry him or Emily. But as soon as David walked in, Emily toddling beside him, he took one look at my face and knew something was wrong. Lauren, what happened? He asked, concern edged on his features. I looked at my husband, then at my daughter, 
Her innocent face turned up to me in confusion at seeing Mommy upset. In that moment, I made a decision. This was my family now. Jimmy had made his choice long ago, and I couldn't let his reappearance destroy the life I'd rebuilt. The morning after Jimmy's unexpected visit, my phone rang. It was my mother, her voice a mix of worry and excitement. Lauren, Jimmy came to see me. He needed money, so I lent him some. I thought you'd want to know he's okay. My heart fell. Mom, please refrain from giving him any more cash. The Jimmy we knew has changed. All he wants is easy money. He has no desire to labor. Make me a promise that you won't give him any more. I hung up the phone and sat with my head in my hands at the kitchen table. I knew that this wasn't the end. As expected, my mother called again a few days later, sounding much more worried. Jimmy had returned and was requesting more cash. He got combative, yelling and beating on my door when I refused. The final straw was that. David and I got to work right away. After dropping Emily off with David's parents, we spent the week at my mother's place. It was our turn to keep awake, alert at all times. On a soggy Thursday evening, the confrontation we had been dreading finally materialized. Jimmy arrived, banging on the door and yelling for money while obviously intoxicated. With David following on my tail, I opened the door. Jimmy, you need to leave now. His eyes lacked focus and were wild. He pushed forward, not until I get what's mine, but David stopped him. Jimmy stumbled and said, I'm warning you. I'll make you all sorry if you don't give me what I want. David then made a police call. Jimmy persisted in his tirade and threats as we waited for them to show up. In the backdrop, my mother trembled and clutched her chest. My heart hurt to see her misery and dread. Jimmy was swiftly taken away and subdued by the cops upon their arrival. I had an odd mixture of relief and melancholy as the patrol car drove away. I messaged Tom on social media later that evening in the hopes that he could assist Jimmy. He gave a chilly reaction. It's no longer my concern. Vanessa stole everything from me and left me to cope with my own problems. Jimmy is by himself. I could feel the remaining strands of my former existence finally breaking as I read his remarks. I went to court the following day to get a restraining order against Jimmy. Although it was the toughest thing I had ever done, I felt it was essential to keep my family safe. Years elapsed after months. Jimmy was never seen by us again. Though sleepless nights decreased with time, life continued on. Occasionally, I would lay awake at night, wondering where he was and whether he was okay. As Emily developed into a bright and inquisitive little child, David's business prospered. I experienced a deep sense of tranquility one Sunday afternoon when I watched David pushing Emily on the swing in our backyard. My life was now like this, not flawless but full of joy, laughing and love.